According to Nature, which is a important scientific publication, around 10 to 15% of all the energy used goes towards separation processes. The country such a membrane, if successful, that will enable us to save vast amounts of energy and CO2 emissions. The most common way to separate molecules is to use what's called distillation. You have to boil the water and turn it into a vapour. And boiling water and turning it into vapour takes a huge amount of energy. BP use very large volumes of water usually seawater, and that actually is probably about three times the volume of oil that we actually produce. We inject large volumes of water to support oil and gas production. Uh, the water is typically seawater in that instance. We have to treat it to a condition that's suitable for injection. We remove a very large proportion of the salt, the saline ions that are in solution. That allows a greater proportion of the oil to, to basically be swept from the rock surface. The membranes give us the opportunity to take seawater and to generate the low salinity water that we need. Despite reverse osmosis using membranes being a well-established process, until recently, surprisingly little was known about how these membranes actually work. We have come to a time where we are very keen on energy saving, enhancing the uh, production capacity, increasing the lifetime of the membranes. It has become extremely essential to understand how they work. BP ICAM's international teams of researchers are taking on the challenge of creating more efficient membranes with the potential for new applications. Through experiments and mathematical modelling, researchers at Imperial College London are developing a new understanding of the structure and function of polymer membranes from reverse osmosis. We try to look into the formation mechanism of these membranes as well as how the morphology of these membranes was formed. What we stumbled across was the making very, very thin membranes. So we made membranes that had less than 10 nanometer thickness, very thin membranes. Because they're so thin, they have an incredibly high permeance, which means that the rate that liquids go through them is very, very fast. And that means you can use much smaller membrane plants than would otherwise be possible. And that brings down the cost and the resource consumption of using membrane separations. The membranes that we have worked on under ICAM also have utility in separating organic solutions. We have a sister project at the University of Illinois looking at new membranes to try and clean up wastewater. Our idea was to develop polymers membranes that will actually be selective, letting water pass through, letting the salt pass through, and rejecting the organics that are toxic to nature. If you want to innovate and you want to come out with new materials, you need to have different disciplines coming together. That was the opportunity that BP gave us to get to know each other and say, wow, you know, this complementation is going to do something revolutionary. You have chemists, physicists, molecular modelers, you have imaging specialists. So all of these people are coming together to try and understand how that membrane works at a fundamental level. The great leaps in knowledge happen right at the interfaces of those disciplines. It's fundamental research but with application in mind.